Hello everybody, this is David again. Uh, this time I wanted to do a review. I got a few, I've collected a few FPGA boards over the years and uh, I'd like to show them to you and tell you about them and um, so you can make uh, a good decision uh, for when you want to go buy one. So uh, here are the boards I'll be going over. The first one I'll cover has an Altera, and then there are one, two, three, four, five, five Digilent boards. I really like Digilent, and Vivado is really easy. And then the Nanland.com Go board, and then another one with an Altera, an old school with a Cyclone to the Jurassic. So let me show you the boards. Okay, the first board I have here is it has an Altera Cyclone 2 FPGA on it. It's basically just a breakout. It has a bunch of male headers on it for this FPGA. Um, this was the first FPGA I bought. When I first started getting into Verilog, I was like, oh man, that's so cool. I need to get a, an FPGA to program. I found this on eBay for like $20. And I was like, cool, an FPGA for 20 bucks. I had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted to get started on FPGA and I bought this and I found out later that you actually need it, this does not have a USB programmer you need to get something like this called a USB blaster and you need to hook up these lines this part will go to your computer it's basically an adapter for your USB um, this is a JTAG, I believe, and you, this is, so this is how you would program it. And then, um, you would need the Cordis 2 software to program this. Um, now the Cordis 2, the latest versions of Cordis 2 software does not have support for the older Cyclone 2. So you would have to get a, an older version of Cordis, which I think version uh, somewhere around 2015 or something, so six, seven years old. All right, let me show you the, the next FPGA I have is called the CMOD A7, and it is a, a breadboardable um, FPGA. It has the, the Xilinx Arctic 7, this has a 15T. But it's basically like the previous one. It's just a breakout for the Arctic 7. It does have a couple of buttons right here, which you can use. And some more ports uh, sticking out here. Um, I've used this a couple of times. It's actually pretty cool. Just no peripherals. You have to have all your own peripherals um, for the breadboard. But this could be used for a cool project. Um, you can program this with, with Vivado. Um, yeah, alright, now let me show you the next one. This is uh, Old Faithful right here, the, the Basis 3. Um, you've seen me do a lot of videos on that, but unlike the previous two, this one has peripherals. You can already get started messing with it. It has 16 switches down here, 16 LEDs across the top here, four seven segment displays, five buttons four PMOD ports. One of them is actually, you can use it as standard I.O. or an analog to digital converter. Of course, it has the VGA port. Um, here's another port down here, small USB. I've never used it. Oh, actually, yeah, that's where you plug in the, sorry, that's where you plug in the, the USB to program the board. Uh, uh, here's the, and then here's a, a USB adapter where you can put in a flash drive and program the board. There's a little jumper right here, which has different modes for programming. It has QSPI, JTAG, and USB. Right now, it's in the USB mode. So, um, in order to program this from from uh, the JTAG or from here, you put in the JTAG mode. If you're going to program from here, you put in the USB mode. And that's pretty much it. All right, let me take a look at the next one. Here is uh, the Cora Z7 by Digilent. Now the Z7, the Basis 3 has also has, um, I forgot to tell you, it has an Arctic 7 chip on it, the Arctic 7 by Xilinx. This actually has the Zinc 
7000. Now what the zinc chip is, it's an SOC, it's a system on a chip. So inside this chip here, it has Arctic 7 fabric. So it has the same fabric uh, for logic as an Arctic 7, but then it also has embedded inside of it uh, microcontrollers, which are Cortex um, ARM Cortex processors. And I believe this one is a dual one because you can get different versions of this board. And I got the, I always like to get the better one. So I got the one that has the dual Cortex. But uh, this has a few peripherals. You have um, a couple of buttons down here. There is an RGB light on here. I don't remember exactly which one it is. There's a couple LEDs here, but then there's also an RGB light, which is cool to program, which I might do a video on soon. Um, but it has like the Arduino shield uh, form factor right here, and then also some PMODs. Now you can use, and then uh, of course, Ethernet right here. And you program it through here. Um, it also has a mini uh, SD card right here, or just SD card. Uh, yeah, mini, I believe. And then USB uh, over here as well. So, yeah, uh, pretty cool board. I haven't really done much with uh, any of the SOC stuff. I'm just straight hardware logic guy. All right, let me show you the next board. This one here is the Zebo Z7. It's got the the Zinc processor on it again, or the Zinc um, chip, the SOC, which has. Uh, Logic from Arctic 7 fabric and also um, processors on here. Um, this is a huge heat sink on here, but this has a lot more peripherals. You can see we got four switches here, four LEDs. Uh, there's some four buttons here. There's a couple more buttons here. A bunch of P mods coming out. USB. Here's where you program it. It's got um, Ethernet. It's got HDMI transmit, HDMI receive. This, um, it's got a micro uh, SD on the bottom. This is to hook up uh, the, the OVM camera, which would be cool to mess with. I might do that sometime. Uh, and then it also has uh, some audio stuff over here, a mic, uh, microphone. And then it's got um, six P mods. And this one is the analog to digital converter. So very cool board lots of stuff to do with it i haven't really done much with it except i haven't done much with the soc chips um yeah all right let me show you the next one here is the fifth and final digilent board that i have this is the nexus video um, i just got this one recently it's pretty pricey but I was able to find it on eBay for two and, and win the auction for like 220 bucks and then and pay for shipping. So it's a pretty sweet deal. So thanks to whoever sold me that. But this has tons of peripherals on it. And um, the old Nexus boards had the LCD screen. I like this one. It has the old LED display, which is, you know, more modern, I believe. It's got the switchers here, uh, LEDs, of course, the OLED. It's got five buttons. Um... It's got all kinds of connections. It's got P mods. It's got USB. It's got UART down here. Uh, program port. HDMI in. HDMI out. Uh, Ethernet. Uh, another display port that I have no idea what that's for. Uh, line in, mic, line out, all your stuff for audio over here. Some more P mods, and then this big old connector right here, which I think is FMC. I'm not really sure. And I don't really know what you use it for, honestly, but it's it's a pretty cool board. There's some stuff I want to get into, especially uh, HDMI uh, after doing uh, learning VGA and then um, OLED display. And, and you can also program it um, or it has an SD micro here. You can program it from this micro USB and from a flash drive using two jumpers here this jumper you have to put into usb slash sd card mode and then over here you you set whether you're using sd card or usb all right that's it for that one let me show you the next one this is the nanlan.com go board as you can see across the top this is a great beginner board and if you haven't been to nanlan.com i recommend it like the guy over there doing that russell he he's done a great job 
with his website. He's got lots of information on FPGAs, Verilog, VHDL, all kinds of different systems and stuff. And then he actually produced this board and he has a lot of tutorials to get you started and programming and uh, using this board. But it has uh, four buttons, one P mod, uh, a dual seven segment display, um, four LEDs here, you can do VGA on here, and then this is where USB to connect to programming. Um, I, I have a 3D printer and I, I printed a little case for it, so that's what you see around here, it's a little case. There's actually a top, but it didn't fit, so I just jammed it in here and it stays in the bottom part. He has the STL files on his uh, website too, so if you can buy a board from there. This is a very uh, inexpensive board. It's $65 compared to a lot of the other ones. This is the cheapest one. It has a Lattice uh, Ice 40 FPGA. Um, now, the only thing about this one is you need you need like three pieces of software if you're going to do all this stuff. So you need to get like the Lattice Ice. Um, then there's a, I can't remember, I had them. And then I had to do stuff with Vivado, so I needed room on my computer, so I actually deleted it. But you need like, and then and then just go to nanlin.com and and, and it'll, it's great. It tells you how to get all started with this. It's, it's a pretty cool board. All right, and now on to the last board. Gotta bust it out. This is the uh, the big daddy right here. So this is old uh, Terrasic DE2 chip or chip, not chip. FPGA board. It's got four buttons down here, 16 switches. Uh, dang, how many LEDs we got right here? 18 LEDs, um, some seven segment displays split up here. Another LED in there. Um, of course, the, the LCD screen right here. Uh, it has a Cyclone 2 by Altera on it, so once again, you'll need an older version of Quartus. Um, it has this connector over here. I, I don't think that's the same as FMC. I'm not really sure. Big old, huge, old school SD card can go in here. Uh, we got VGA. We got Ethernet. Another V... Well, actually, this is RS-232. This is VGA. Uh, video in, line out, line in, mic host usb um wow some more like old school printer cable devices stuff right here that's the power button on and off um it's another switch program and run yeah this is a, a pretty cool board i just i wanted a board that i could use for not just digital boards with xilinx but i wanted to try out the altera experience as well and cordis and i did at one time and actually i prefer vivado although cortis has um some features about it that are really cool like you can make a state transition diagram just like an aldec or aldec whatever you call it and and it will convert it will take that state transition diagram and generate your hdl code for you from that whether you like verilog or vhdl which is pretty cool i think it has a block diagram thing that can do that as well i kind of wish um that Vivado would do that but um yeah I'll just pile these guys up here these are all my toys um thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed maybe you can make a, a decision on which fpga board you want um you can buy straight from digilent or check ebay there's some good boards on ebay all the time okay thanks for watching bye